Real Life is one of the best anime that I watched in recent years, and I'm gonna explain why I enjoyed it so much. But first, for those who are not familiar with the story, Real Life is about a 27 year old guy named Arata Kaizeki. He is in need, and need means not an education, employment or training. He really struggles to find a well paying decent job and has to live off of his parents income. He only has a part-time job at a supermarket and is generally not really happy and also lonely. Kaiseki's parents threaten to stop sending him money for living because he is old enough already and must be able to support himself. That means that in one month Kaiseki has to find a good job or otherwise he won't be able to afford living in his apartment. Kaiseki feels embarrassed and in front of his so-called friends pretends that he has a great job. One night Arata meets a stranger on the street who offers him to participate in a weird experiment called Real Life. This experiment's purpose is to help people who have lost touch with society and struggle with life. People like Arata. Arata is offered to go back to high school for one year, to live one year of his youth again. An experiment that is supposed to change his life. He will be financially supported by the program during the year and afterwards he will be assisted with finding a job. Of course Kaizeki agrees almost immediately to such a proposal, because he doesn't really have a better alternative. He only agrees to be part of the program because of his financial troubles. But the program actually manages to change him as a person and change the way he sees himself. So what's so good about the show? To me personally it's how the story shows real life problems that adults encounter through the lens of high school, how it juxtaposes high school with a working environment. The show depicts very serious problems of very toxic Japanese work culture. Kaizeki had a well paying job but he left the company he was working at because his female co-worker committed suicide. She was bullied by her male counterparts, they didn't like her because she was a woman and genuinely wanted to do something good. In a capitalist culture life turns into an endless competition, endless race for better position and therefore better money. Because only money truly matters in capitalism. And in order to reach the finish line people are ready to stomp on each other. In a system that doesn't value human life, human beings are treated literally like details of a much bigger machine. When Kaizeki sees how his boss treats the death of his co-worker, he decides to quit his job. That's precisely why he ended up in his situation. For showing compassion in a completely hostile, compassionless environment. I had and still have a lot of questions. And one of these questions, frankly the first that popped up in my mind while watching the show was, why exactly high school? Why does this program send grown ups nearing their 30s to high school instead of say, college? Wouldn't it be more appropriate to send a 27 year old to final year of college? There would have been a smaller age gap and a gap in maturity. Not to mention that all other students would most certainly be older than 18 years old. Or maybe real life should just help to find a good and well paid job. But then I have come to realize that wouldn't really make much sense. In order to truly change you need to start from the beginning. High school, especially its last year, is that bridge between childhood and adulthood. It practically the last time when a person can feel somewhat free without being treated like a kid. Hence many Japanese people idolize high school a lot and see it as the best period of their life. For some people this is just pure nostalgia, an illusion that life used to be better back in the day, a feeling, I am sure of it, familiar to most of us. But for many people this is definitely true. High school is the last time when there is a strong sense of community. College or university are not nearly the same. They are much more similar to the work environment where everyone is for themselves. This is why high school is chosen for real life. I liked Rena's story, her friendship with Hanoka Tamara and their volleyball team. She is a prominent Aoba high school volleyball player, but she injures her ankle a couple of weeks before the very important game. Her ankle heals right before the big game. Out of anger and disappointment she decides she has to retire and not play the important game because she is out of practice. But eventually Kaizeki and Hishiro convince Rena to not give up on her volleyball team, and she plays alongside Tamara. And then they decide to keep playing together in college. Speaking of Hishiro, she is definitely my favorite character in this show. Her story is very complex. 
She is a very close person who only focuses on her studies and nothing else. She doesn't even know how to socialize, doesn't know how to talk to others and even how to smile. Until she meets Kaiseki who helps her. I really love this trope, it's refreshing to see. Usually the main protagonist is awkward and introverted and the girl helps him to come out of his shell, but in real life it's the reverse. Arata helps Hishiro, he even teaches her how to smile because her smile looks really terrifying. They fall in love with each other. Later it turns out Hishiro is also a real life subject but she had to spend 2 years in the program because she stubbornly refused to change and open up. Until she met the main character. A very beautiful plotline. One question to this story that bothers me a lot. The experiment subject spends a year at high school, but once this year ends, other students and school staff must forget that she or he ever existed. How? As I understand their memories are erased, but again, how is it done? Does the organization that is responsible for the real life program kidnap students and school staff? Okay, it is possible to erase memories of someone specifically, but what about physical evidence, like photographs for instance? The show doesn't really give a satisfying answer. It's not exactly clear what happens to those photographs. We can assume that the organization is capable of erasing the photos that they're taking at school like yearbook pictures. But what about pictures the students take themselves on their phones? Does the organization control that too? And what organization? It is some shady corporation of which we know nothing, but it doesn't matter anyway, the story is not about it. This is perhaps my biggest criticism of this story. How do you possibly remove a person from someone else's life? What about the subject's family for instance? Kazuki does have parents who probably live in a different city. What if they decide to pay him a visit during real life? A lot of unanswered questions. The story has a lot of holes. But after all, real life is just a very hopeful story that reminds people of things like friendship, the excitement of first romance, exams, school sport events or summer holidays. This is why many people enjoy this story so much. I myself graduated from high school just a few years ago. I wouldn't wish to go back to high school again. I don't like my high school. It was really bad and I had no friends at all. But even I reminisce from time to time. And real life is just a strong nostalgia fuel. The ending of the story is hopeful. It shows that anyone can move forward. High school experience allows Arata Kaiseki to rediscover himself and find what he is truly passionate about instead of just spending hours and hours in the office. And this is a very important message to all of us. We can be Arata Kaiseki too. As always I am a Equestria guy and see you again.